And welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp, and I'm the Executive Editor of Dataversity. We want to thank you for joining October's installment of the monthly Dataversity webinar series, Real World Data Governance, with Bob Seiner. Today we're discussing managing governance metadata for mass consumption. A couple of points to get us started. Due to the large number of people that attend these sessions, you will be muted during the webinar. For questions, we will be collecting them via the Q&A in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Or if you like to tweet, we encourage you to share highlights or questions via Twitter using hashtag RWDG. As always, we will send a follow-up email within two business days containing links to the slides, the recording of this session, and additional information requested throughout the webinar. Let me introduce to you our speaker today, Bob Seiner. Bob is the President and Principal of KIK Consulting and Educational Services and the publisher of the Data Administration Newsletter. Bob has been a recipient of the DAMA Professional Award for significant and demonstrable contributions to the data management industry. And Bob specializes in non-invasive data governance, data stewardship, and data management solutions. With that, I will give the floor to Bob to introduce the webinar. Hello and welcome. Okay. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you, like always. Thank you, everybody out there in listener land who is taking an hour out of your uh, busy month to uh, to participate in these sessions. And again, welcome to the latest installment of the Real World Data Go Governance webinar series. As Shannon mentioned, this is titled Managing Governance Metadata for Mass Consumption. And just to let you know, right now, I'm actually I'm not in my home office. I'm actually at a client where we're spending a lot of time these days talking about governance metadata and precisely what governance metadata is and who should be responsible for it and who is going to want that information uh, to be available to them to assist them in doing their everyday job. So with that, with that without further ado, I want to uh, start right into the slides. And as Shannon said, if you've got questions, please submit them in the bottom right-hand corner in the Q&A section. Sometimes we get some questions during the chats, uh, in the chats, but you know, please uh, submit the questions through the Q&A. And we're glad to answer the questions if we have time for it in the webinar itself. If not, all the answers will be sent to you in the follow-up email that Shannon mentioned. I uh, just wanted to share with you a little bit before we get started here. For the upcoming webinars, now Shannon and I and uh, folks at Dataversity have been working on a list of topics for 2014, and we think we have some really great topics, so please stay tuned. And, uh, and if you have some ideas as to things that will be of interest to you in the world of real-world data governance, um, please send those to us either via email or through the, the chat or through the Q&A, because we're all interested in what you, the listeners, are um, are interested in and hit the hottest topics of the day. It seems as though this topic, the uh, managing governance metadata, raises a lot of questions with a lot of people. What exactly is governance metadata? Well, we're going to talk about that in the session here next month, a week before the Thanksgiving holiday, for those of you in the U.S. Um, we'll be talking about governing data, big and small, come one, come all. So we're going to talk about the governance of big data. We're going to talk about the governance of other types of data that we have in our organization. And then in the December uh, webinar of Real World Data Governance, we're going to talk about setting data governance expectations for management. So hopefully you'll have some time in your busy schedules. Participate in those webinars as well. And so as I said, without further ado, let's, let's start talking about managing governance metadata. The next several slides are the abstract that, that uh, hopefully is, is part of the reason that attracted you to this webinar. But I'll walk through it real quickly with you. Usually I kind of fly through these slides really quickly, but I think it makes sense to talk about some of the points that are made in the abstract, and then we're going to follow up and we're going to talk more about it as we get into the session itself. So one of the things, if you have participated in my webinars before, metadata as being a byproduct of a successful data governance program. And in a lot of organizations that are um, implementing governance programs and have been successful, they seem to lean on the fact that they need metadata as part of their initiative. And in fact, this client that I am working from uh, today, they talk about governing metadata almost more than they talk about governing the data itself. But I want to talk about a specific type of metadata, and that is governance metadata. 
And more often than not, as it says here in the abstract, people talk about uh, the success of their programs depending on the availability of metadata to the users, to the definers, to the producers of data across the organization. Well, I'm going to introduce another subject here. I'm going to talk about governance metadata and metadata that is specifically going to be an outcome or a byproduct of your governance program. So we'll talk about more than just the meaning of data and where the data came from and the rules that are associated with, with uh, defining, producing, and using the data. We're going to talk about metadata that you're going to come up with as you're putting your governance program in place. And not only that, I'm going to share with you several tools and tablets, some of which you may have seen before in prior uh, real-world data governance webinars, but some of them that might be somewhat new to you as well. And as Shannon mentioned, we're going to make sure that we send these out to everybody who's registered for the webinar. And I'm always interested in your feedback as to whether or not these tools have been helpful to you in your everyday job. I know one of the tools that I share pretty often is something that I call a common data matrix. It's just a way to view data across the organization. And oftentimes when I'm getting presentations, that's one of the early things that I talk about. Now, I started to shy away from that a little bit because people started to fill out the common data matrix rather than listening to what I have to say in the sessions. So we'll get to it shortly. I'm going to share with you several different versions of common data matrix, uh, common data matrices, and uh, data governance activity matrices and things like that. So I'd be very interested to hear from you as to whether or not uh, these tools will be beneficial to you in your program or whether or not you've created things like this within your program. And the interesting thing is all of these matrices and these tools that I love to share during these webinars, all of the information that is contained within these tools and within these matrices is considered to be governance metadata. It's metadata that we are developing as a piece of delivering our data governance program, and it becomes very valuable to capture that information and make that available to people throughout your organization. Now, one of the things that we tried in the last webinar to try to make this a little bit more interactive is I asked questions of the people that were participating in the call, and please use the Q&A or the chat areas, preferably the Q&A section, just to, to keep everything in one place. Um, if you have answers to the questions or you've got questions to kind of follow on to those questions, I'd love to hear those. And I think those are the ways that we can share information between ourselves and I can share information with you throughout this webinar. So the question becomes, how well do you manage the metadata that's associated with your data governance program? And do you even consider that there is metadata that's associated specifically with your governance program as compared to with the data uh, definition of data in your organization or that lineage that we spoke about earlier. And the other question is, how well should you manage this metadata? I've found from my experience that a lot of times the success or failure of a data governance or information governance initiative depends on how well they collect this information, what the quality of this information is, how to disperse it to people across the organization. And what I found is in those organizations that tend to have higher levels of success, the, the metadata becomes a big part of that. So we're going to talk about, again, how well you manage the metadata, what does it take to manage the metadata. So hopefully some of those answers will, um, will come in this webinar today. So the rest of the abstract is we're going to talk about the metadata that's derived through governance program, the importance of this metadata. And then hopefully I'll share with you some ideas that you'll find useful on the best ways to manage this metadata on a mass consumption basis. And I'm going to talk a little more about mass consumption and mass production in a minute here. So um, that's the abstract. Here's the agenda. We're going to talk about data governance and metadata as being a two-way street. And a lot of consultants like to talk about their three-legged stools, you know, something that we can't really have success in an area if we don't cover all three legs. So I'm going to I developed a three-legged stool specifically for this presentation, and the idea is that if you pull one of those legs out, the stool falls over. So we need to have all three of those, those of the stool in order to be successful in governance and to be successful in governing metadata that's associated with our governance program. So then after we talk about the two-way street and the three-legged stool, we're going to talk about seven questions for the day. So this is where I'm going to kind of pose the questions to you and also 
give you the opportunity to respond and let me know what you think um, and what your answers to these questions are. And if we can, we'll share those answers and we'll share information with uh, the people that are participating in this webinar. So the questions for the day is on the who, who, what, why, when, how, and where, and who should have responsibility for governance metadata. Who will want to use that governance metadata? What governance metadata will they want to use? Why will they want to use it? You know, when will they need it? How will we deliver it? And where will they go to get access to that metadata? So really, we're going to run a gamut of things related to governance metadata. And as I said before, hopefully a lot of this information will be very valuable to you. So this question, and something that I alluded to a minute ago, was what do we mean by mass consumption? Is everybody in the organization going to potentially be a user of the governance metadata? And the answer to that is, is pretty much yes. I mean, everybody in the organization, from the operational level, through the tactical level, through the strategic level, and even all the way up to the executive level, can be users of this information, of governance metadata. And we want to talk a little bit about how that information is going to be useful to people and what they will uh, be able to derive from that governance metadata. And is mass production necessary? Well, it depends on what you refer to things as mass production. You know, when you are working on initiatives, oftentimes a lot of this information is being collected or you're getting the appropriate people involved at the appropriate time in your initiatives, whether it's data warehousing or master data management or big data or whatever it is that you're working on. You're going to, even without governance, you're going to address the most appropriate people in the organization that you can to get them involved in these initiatives. And my suggestion is that we record some of this information. So if there's a change to a business rule associated with the data, we know who we need to share that information with. We know who needs to be notified when a change to a business rule takes place or when a change to a regulatory or compliance rule takes place. So it may not be mass production, but it has to be at least a managed level of production. And again, the goal is to get the metadata that is a result of your governance program, and that's what I'm calling governance metadata, into the hands of people that will get value from its use. Oftentimes when I do these webinars, I start out with definitions of data governance and data stewardship and non-invasive data governance. And I'm going to add a definition to this time through that talks specifically about well, how we define what governance metadata is. So a lot of people cringe when they see my definition of data governance. I talk about data governance being the execution and enforcement of authority over the management of data and data-related resources. And, and oftentimes people think those words are worded too strongly and they cringe and they think, wow, you're talking about trying to do governance in a non-invasive way, which I'll talk a little bit more about in a second. And, and I'll, I'll continue to talk about throughout the session. But they say if we are going to govern um, govern the data, we need to execute and enforce authority over that data. We need to be able to make difficult decisions around the data and get the right people involved in those decisions at the right time. You know, whenever we can. And so my definition of, of governance is, is that it's the execution and enforcement of authority over the management of that data rather than saying it's the orchestration or the harmonization of people, process, and data, which to me sounds almost too soft. In fact, the, the definition that I use for data stewardship is the data steward is the formalization of accountability over management of data and data-related uh, resources. So you notice know what I don't say there is the assignment of accountability. Uh, it's more the recognition of people and what they do with the data because if you've seen through the TDAN publication, the articles that I've written, I have a very different view on data stewards and data stewardship in my mind. Particularly everybody in the organization that either defines or produces or uses data as part of their daily job have some level of accountability for how they manage that data, for how they define and produce and use that data. So again, these are my two definitions, the two primary definitions that I use. And I've seen a lot of organizations that I've worked with kind of combine those two definitions into one for governance. Uh, people recognize that stewardship is all about the, the people and the people that we identify as being stewards of the data. Some organizations have combined those two definitions to kind of say that 
data governance is really the formalization of accountability and the formalization of behavior of the people that are associated with the data. So again, just want to kind of start from uh, from bare bones here at the beginning and share with with you what my thoughts are around some of the definitions of terms that you're going to hear throughout this webinar. So my definition of non-invasive data governance, and I use the term non-invasive all the time to define how I approach data governance, but it's the practice of applying formal accountability and behavior through non-invasive roles and responsibilities to existing and or new processes. Again, it's, it's on the screen in front of you. I um, don't want to read all the way through it, but I talk about non-invasive data governance quite a bit and the fact that we're already governing data. We already have people people in the organization that either already have accountability for the management of the data or that we need to formalize their accountability around the, the management of the data. So again, what we'll talk about is applying formal accountability and behavior to non-invasive roles and responsibilities. And I'm going to share with you uh, some examples of some processes where governance has been applied, uh, a framework or a model of different roles and responsibilities. And some of you may have seen them before, maybe not talked about them in context of managing governance metadata, but that's how we're going to view those things today. So I already defined data governance and data stewardship and non-invasive data governance. The one other definition that I wanted to share with you today was what I call governance metadata. So I'm sure all of you are familiar with the term metadata and the industry definition of what metadata is. It's of course, it's data about data. Well, that certainly could cover a lot of different things. That can cover, you know, the definition of the data and the data modeling, the movement of the data, and the production of the data through your ETL tools and things like that. The usage of the data, your analytic and reporting tools. But the actual result of governance metadata is governance metadata is more about the people associated with the data. So, so it's the result of identifying who in the organization has that formal accountability and responsibility, and who in the organization even just touches data, because they have some type of responsibility around what they do with the data, even though we don't necessarily go out and formally identify them as being data stewards. So governing metadata is a result of identifying who has formal accountability and responsibility associated with the definition, production, and usage of data, across the organization departmentally to order that these things take place. The definition, production, and usage of data assures compliance, security, privacy, protection, and quality. This is another slide that I've shared in the past, but I think it's very important to, uh, to take this diagram to heart. And in fact, I just wrote an article in this month's issue of the Data Administration Newsletter of TDAN.com, and the name of the article is Core data governance core principles. And I've had a lot of response from people who have said that these core principles are really what governance is all about. And in fact, just a minutes before this webinar started, my client here, uh, I'm actually in Dayton, Ohio, said that they'd like to take this graphic and laminate it and put it on in front of people, have them ha have it hanging from their, their uh, cubicles so that they see. And if they really ever have a question of what governance is all about, then take these core principles to uh, to heart. So the first principle being that data must be governed as a strategic enterprise asset. And the second one being that they must have clearly defined accountability. And the third one is that data must be governed to follow internal and external rules and that data quality must be governed consistently across the enterprise. It's my thought that if we can take these core principles around governance to our management, and they can say, yes, these are all very important. It gives us kind of the backbone of what we need in order to implement governance in our organization. As long as what we're doing, what our activities are that are associated with governance align with these four core principles, I find it very valuable if we just get our management to look at these principles and say, well, these are no-brainers. We know that we need to manage uh, data as an asset. That may be one of the ones that are one of the more difficult hurdles to get over is they, they manage people and they, I'm sorry, they manage um, money and they manage facilities and they manage other things as core assets. If we get our management to recognize the need 
to, and to sign off or just to agree that data must be managed as an asset, that, that's the first core principle. They must have clearly defined accountability. Again, that seems to be everything that, that governance is all about. Let's identify who's doing what with data, and let's help them to understand the impact of what they do and, and how that is important to the organization. Data must be governed to follow internal and external rules and regulations. Again, that's a no-brainer because there's no, the, the government or whoever is applying these rules and regulations, these regulatory and compliance issues to us, they're not making it optional for us. So it's pretty much, again, I, oftentimes I uh, actually never seen anybody push back on that and say that, no, data must not be governed to follow internal rules and regulations. But if we agree that we must achieve that core principle, then, again, that gives us some of the weight behind those things that we're doing associated with governance in our organization. So the question really becomes, you know, these same governance principles apply to the metadata itself, or even the governance metadata that I spoke about earlier. And I would say the uh, principles one, two, and four, for sure, they um, they are associated with the metadata and the governance metadata that we're going to talk about in the session here today. I'm not certain whether or not there are any regulatory rules that are associated with the governance or the management of the metadata, but I guess if you dig into them a little bit, those rules themselves are metadata. There's things that we need to be able to provide to people that use data across the organization so that they understand how the data can be used, how the data can't be used, who they can share the data with, and so on and so forth. So those four core principles, pretty much, I, I believe, are going to be made a part of, of pretty much all the presentations that I give because it's it kind of shows it as one graphic, kind of nutshell, of one of the things that we need to be concerned about as we are putting our governance program in place. So last year, actually in 2012, I, uh, one of these real-world data governance webinars focused on governance and metadata, and I talked about it, I alluded to it as being a two-way street. Let me share with you uh, again what I, I talk about when I talk about governance and metadata being that two-way two street. So the first principle is the one that's on the bottom of the page here, which is, and that's something that I mentioned earlier, that metadata is a byproduct of your data governance program. So if you utilize some of the tools and things that I've shared with you uh, or that I will share with you through this webinar and I've shared with you in past webinars, if you collect that information, that itself becomes governance metadata. This is information that we are collecting to help to enable our governance program. And I think that will become more obvious as we, uh, as we move forward here. The other principle, or the other, uh, this other side of the street, so to speak, is that we must apply governance to the data itself. They might need to identify what metadata is important to our organization, where is that metadata being collected, who they use that metadata, but we need to govern the metadata itself in order to make it valuable to the organization. So when we think about the relationship between governance and metadata, the truth is it's a two-way street. Metadata is a byproduct of governance, and we need to govern the metadata to an extent. Maybe in, even in some organizations, they need to govern the metadata to the same extent they manage the, the data itself. In fact, that again just came from a meeting here at my client where we talked about something that, that I refer to as cheeseburger definitions. And cheeseburger definition. Well, what's a cheeseburger? It's a burger with cheese. What's a patient account? And it's an account for a patient. What's a student address? It's an address for the student. We're applying governance to the metadata itself. We need to make certain that that information that we collect as part of our everyday um, day management activities is going to be relevant, is going to be useful to people throughout the organization. So if you want to think about governance and you want to think about metadata together, think of it as being a two-way street, again, as I just uh, spoke about here a second ago. So, and, and again, I find a lot of organizations and a lot of consultants like to use the three-legged stool analogy. So again, we talk about metadata as a byproduct and metadata must be governed, but metadata also becomes an enabler to our governance program, to our BI initiatives, master data, uh, big data initiatives. Metadata becomes an enabler to success for all those different types of initiatives. So this, again, is 
just another way to look at it. It's the three-legged stool versus the two-way street that I just spoke about a minute ago. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to go through those questions, the two who questions, the what question, the why, the where, the how, all those things that I talked about. And here's where I'd like to make this somewhat interactive, if we can. If you have answers to these questions, please feel free to, to, to enter them. I hate to put you to work here, but you know, if, they, if you have ideas specifically within your organization as to who have the responsibility for governance and data, then please share that with me, share that with the other people that are participating in this webinar. So I have um, I've shown this graphic several times before. Uh, in their initiatives. I talk about the operational level, I talk about the tactical level, the strategic and the executive levels within our organization. This picture right here, I call it a pyramid, you can call it a triangle, you can call it whatever you want. Um, it, it pretty much defines the way that the organization is already set up. In fact, a lot of people have told me that the first impression that they get from looking at this diagram is that Data governance is so bureaucratic. It's got so many different levels and so many different roles. When in fact, in a lot of organizations, we've already got people that day to day are defining, producing, and using the data. And that's at the operational level. Those people are identified as stewards. Um, we may not give them the title. We don't give them the title, actually. We don't need to call people stewards, but they need to recognize that what they do with the data that they define, produce, and use has an impact on other people throughout the organization. The middle layer here I've talked about quite a bit, which is the technical level. That's where we stop looking at the data as a siloed business unit by business unit asset. And we have people in the organization that have some level of responsibility or accountability for looking at that data across business units, across business lines, rather than having that data defined specifically for each part of the organization, let's define it in one way so that it will satisfy the needs of the organization. Now, sometimes that doesn't seem possible. Sometimes, you know, I'll just use the example of an education company that I worked for recently, and they, called, they had this thing called a student. I think we're all familiar with what a student is, right? And so when the senior executives of the organization want to know how many students we have, or we can talk about faculties, or we can talk about members, or we can talk about customers, maybe the definition of customer is different depending on who you ask in the organization. So maybe we shouldn't just call it a customer. Maybe we should call it a marketing customer, or a sales customer, or an operation customer. And we need to be able to qualify some of these things that we're defining as being some of the core pieces of data within our organization to specifically match the need and the use of that data across the organization. So I mentioned, again, here in the middle layer of the pyramid is where I've identified a role that I call data domain stewards, people that have responsibility that is associated with the domain of data compared to the data in a specific system that they use for a specific application in the, in the business. We also recognize that this, this level here, the strategic level, that already exists. There's people in the organization that have responsibility for strategic decision making. The same thing holds true at the executive level. So that's why with this, this diagram here, rather than just showing somebody a diagram that looks like this, it becomes very important to put those words that are in red outside of the diagram. It says, well, you know what? This already exists, or this is new, or we can leverage something like this that already exists in the organization. So I know that one of the upcoming webinars in 2014 will be talking about different frameworks and roles and responsibilities around the governance. So I will spend more time talking about this pyramid or this triangle of roles and responsibilities as it pertains to governance in the organization. The other that I haven't talked about here are the data governance partners and the data governance team. So oftentimes I get the question of, well, what's the role of IT? What's the role of compliance? What's the role of our project management office? I consider all of those to be partners in data governance. And so we identify them as being partners. Again, they're not new to the organization. They already exist. And then the data governance team that we talk about, whether it's one person or half of a person or, or 10 people or whatever the size of your data governance team is, you have some level of responsibility too. So 
So going back to the who question here associated with this slide is to have the responsibility for the uh, governance metadata. And the arrows that appeared on the screen kind of point to the different roles within the program with a, with a, da a data governance program that will have some level of accountability or responsibility for capturing this governance metadata, for making this governance metadata available to people in the organization that will use it. Kind of in a nutshell here, the data governance team has the responsibility to assure that the data is collected, the governance partners, of being the information technology folks and regulatory folks and PMO type people, they have responsibility of making sure that the metadata is collected. The data domain stewards, they have the responsibility of looking at that metadata and making certain that the metadata is, is written in such a way that it's meaningful to people across the organization. So their responsibility becomes to validate the metadata that's collected by the partners and by the teams. And again, the operational data stewards, the lowest level of that pyramid diagram on the previous slide, they have the responsibility to provide metadata, to make certain that we're collecting the information that's going to be useful and beneficial to people across the organization. They don't want to use the metadata. So we we just talked about who has the responsibility for collecting this metadata, but we didn't want to really talk about who will want to use this governance metadata as part of their job. And the truth is that it's everybody that we just talked about, as well as the people at the strategic level and the people at the executive level. Let me share with you, again, an example of when senior management asks a question, maybe we need to dig down a little bit deeper in their question before we can actually answer it. So if you want to know how many faculty we have, when we talk about full-time faculty or part-time faculty or people that have been on the faculty at some point in time, or we talk about members or people that are eligible for certain benefits and things like that. Well, are we talking about eligible members? Are we talking about people that were members at some point in time? Again, what we need to do is be able to educate the, the people that are asking these really important questions of our organization, some of the things that may be directly associated with the key performance indicators in the organizations, if we educate them on how to better ask the questions that they're asking, then we can perhaps give them an answer that's going to be acceptable to them. Now, oftentimes, your senior management or your management ask questions and they get different answers depending on who they ask. And this is one of the pet peeves of a lot of senior management is that they are asking questions and depending on who they ask, they get a different answer. And that's because people's definition of some of these items are different from person to person, from role to role. And that's why I'm saying that who will want to use governance metadata? Who will want to know who has the responsibility for defining it? producing, using the data? Well, not only the, the four areas that I talked about before, that being the, the tactical, the operational, and the two support areas, but also the executives and also the, uh, the, the council or the people that are at the strategic level of our organization. So if we want to get a question as to, or if we get a question as to what are our most profitable products? This question that would be out of the ordinary coming from our senior management. Well, what we want to do is we want to first understand, well, what products are they talking about? Are they talking about present products or past products or existing products? You know, we just need to help to educate them on how to ask better questions so that they don't get different answers depending on who they ask. Now, oftentimes, then the different answers are going, to, are going to depend on the source that they go to for the data. But if you're going to go to your data warehouse and you ask the question of how many customers do we have, perhaps we need to qualify that a little bit with, well, what types of customers are we talking about? We're talking about returning customers. We're talking about visitors to a website, visitors to a store. Are those all customers? Are those different types of customers within the organization? So that metadata, that information, about the data that's going to help them to uh, position their question in a better way becomes very important to people, both the strategic, again, and executive levels of the organization. And if we can educate them on how to ask better questions or how to qualify their questions down 
come to precisely what it is that they're looking for, or even explain to them that you ask this question, the reason why you're going to get a different answer is because it means different things to different people across the organization. And here are some examples of how customers define differently from one organization to another, or from one part of the organization to another part of the organization. So I say not only will those four areas that I talked about before have responsibility for collecting the, the, the metadata, but everybody in the organization potentially will have a use for the governance metadata. So again, in a nutshell, the data domain stewards need, they'll, they'll want to use metadata to govern their domain or their subject area of data across the organization, the operational Data stewards will use that metadata to do their daily job, the council to validate and use and make decisions, the executive management to ask the right questions of the data. So again, they're confused by getting different answers from depending on who they ask regarding the data. We need to share some of this regular metadata and governance metadata with them to show them that you know, perhaps customers defined five different ways across the organization. And it's a different meaning to each of those, in, according to each of those definitions. So, which definition do you want to use when you ask that question? Again, that's education to our, our management, our senior management, our executive management, as to how they can better position their questions to get the, the questions answered the way that they need to have the questions answered. Well, what metadata will they want to use? Well, we talked about the different types of metadata that are just associated with the data, the, the, the metadata that exists in your data models, in your ETL tools, in your data usage tools, in your, your DB catalogs or database catalogs, and those types of things. But here we're specifically talking about the governance metadata, the people metadata. So they want to know about the metadata associated with the people that define, produce, and use the data the people who are requesting data governance activities, the people that should be involved or informed of data decisions, and the people that are held formally accountable for the data. Also, in some tools I'm going to share with you in a minute here, there's some information about, well, what part of the organization are they from and why would they have definitions that are different from other parts of the organization. Here's a tool I shared a long time ago just that outlines some of the different types of just plain metadata rather than governance metadata, and this is about the data definition, the production, the use, the business rules, the hardware, the software, and you know, all of those things that are important to run IT like a business area. Those all would be considered just to be plain metadata, but what we're really talking about is the people that are associated with the data. So metadata will they want to use? Well, they'll want to know where did this data come from, who's responsible for it, who's defining it, who's keeping this information up to date. So one of the things that I just developed fairly recently, and is, I'm going to uh, include this in the email that we sent out to everybody who's participating in this session, is, well, what does service request of, of data governance look for? And in fact, one of the things that I'm working on for a future article will be, well, which of the events trigger data governance to happen? So there's some metrics that people may be interested in. How many different services have been requested? How many issues have been documented? How many of them are being worked? How many have been resolved? What's the value that we're getting from resolving these data governance issues or these issues that need to have governance applied to them? This is one tool that I mentioned earlier, and I could spend the rest of the webinar talking about it, but I won't. Um, but if, if you have questions about it, please refer those questions to me and, uh, and let me know, and I'll be glad to answer them the best I can. But this is what I call the common data matrix. Again, it's a simple two-dimensional matrix that, that cross-references the different types of the data in the organization with the different parts of the organization. And who are the people in the specific business units that use a specific type of data in a specific system? If we have all that information available to us and there's a change to a business rule or a compliance rule, we know exactly who in the organization we need communicated to. So what I have found with a lot of organizations is that this common data matrix, as I call it, is a valuable tool to the organization. And all of this information that's collected in it, whether it's the different parts of the organization or the different people that are associated with the data or the different systems that data resides in, that becomes very valuable information. And I consider everything that you see on this slide actually to be governance metadata. It's all about the people that are associated with the data across your organization. And 
And so what I wanted to do with this slide, and I don't think I've done this before any of the webinars, is I kind of superposed that pyramid diagram on top of the common data matrix. And as I said before, this information will be shared with you in the email that we sent out a couple, a couple days of the webinar. But the reason why I superimposed the pyramid diagram on top of the common data matrix is because it's kind of color coordinated here. here. Operating the operating stewards or the people that are day-to-day -day stewards of data, these are these people in the organization. The people that are the domain stewards that have responsibility for the data across the organization, these are these people. So again, if, if you're kind of confused as to how does the well, first of all, why am I using the colors that I'm using? How do they relate to the, the pyramid diagram? I want to share that with you in this diagram. So, again, all of this information that you see within the uh, common data matrix, that is all governance metadata. And it's very important to people across the organization and for getting the right people involved at the right time for solving the right problems within your organization. Another example, I don't think I've shared this one before, of another, or, uh, of another organization that, that took a common data matrix and made a variation of their own, and this was an education company, and they had these different departments, academics, student finance, admissions, marketing, career, you know, corporate finance, HR, IT, and they have different SBUs or strategic business units in the organization. And the things that I'm covering up here with the gray are there could be health um, parts of the organization that are education companies that are healthcare related or that are finance related or that are accounting related or that are school related as an example. So in this organization, they wanted to know who the data stewards were that were specific to this specific type of data to these different parts these parts of the organization. So again, the nice thing about the common data matrix is there's not a one-size-fits-all solution by using that common data matrix to capture the governance metadata. You can really take the tool and customize it in such a way that's going to be meaningful for use within your organization. So what data will they want to use? They want to use the information about who defined the data, produced data, uses the data, and so the data definer information may be who the domain stewards are, the operational stewards are, who the partners are. Again, this is just information about the people that are associated with the data that you manage across your organization. So if you want to know what the difference between governance metadata and other types of metadata, you know, we're talking about governance metadata being the, the, the information that associates the people in the organization with the, with the data that they define, produce, and use. So example of just a, a, a blank spreadsheet type tool or matrix tool that I hand out in many of the presentations that I've given, and that's the one that I mentioned earlier that I, I try not to share this too early in the presentations because people start to document well, what different domains or subject areas of data that we're concerned with. What are different parts of the organization? You know, for this specific type of data in this specific system, in this part of the organization, this is the person that we need to go to. It takes all the guesswork out of how we apply governance across the organization. And then when the government comes to you and says, we are going to apply this additional regulatory compliance rule, it takes all the guesswork out of who we need to describe that change to the regulatory rule with across the organization. And it becomes, again, a very valuable tool. Now, this type of tool, it requires that there's change management associated with it because people in the organization move and change positions. But we want to know who those people are. So, again, the common data matrix becomes a very valuable tool for implementing a governance program within your organization. And what type of metadata is stored within the common data matrix will be the governance metadata that we're talking about today. So metadata will they want to use? Well, this is you know, the other stuff I call it governance metadata. Some organizations consider the data definition metadata, the data production metadata, the data usage metadata to be all about the, the, the metadata all about the data. They consider that to be governance metadata. I actually just consider that to be data metadata as, consumed, as con, uh, compared to governance metadata. So the definition metadata, the standards, the models, the database information, the production information can be the movement information, the lineage, 
the quality information, the usage could be the reporting, and the analytics information. Again, this could be considered to be governance made as well, but for the purposes of this, uh, this webinar here, we're talking about governance metadata being the metadata associated with the people that have responsibility or some level of accountability for data across the organization. <clears throat> so the next question is, you know, why will people want to, new, to know the governance metadata? And to me, it seems like kind of a silly question. But oftentimes they want this governance metadata because they want to improve their understanding of the data. Who defined it? Who used it? Who used it? These items here on the left-hand side of the answers to the question are really the governance, put governance, G for governance metadata versus just the regular metadata. The, the, the information about how the data is defined, how the data is produced, and how the data is used. So I don't know if you make that differentiation within your organization, but it's something that you would want to consider. Consider how valuable this information is to people across the organization, just so they can get the right people involved, again, at the right time to do things within your organization. I was with an organization many years ago that was doing a customer relationship management initiative, and they started with five people in the room, <coughs> excuse me, to define the requirements, and then it went from five to 10, 10 to 15, and they had to go back uh, and rehash what some of their requirements were for their CRM initiative. And they told me that one of the things that we need to focus on with governance is on who do we need to involve in these discussions about the data. Now, the nice thing about the common data matrix is that we can populate those, the common data matrix from existing initiatives or initiatives that have already taken place within our organization. So when we had um, had conversations around a specific type of data, who are the people that we went to in the different parts of the organization? And we can write their names into the common data matrix. It doesn't mean that we need to go out and tap them on the shoulder and tell them, hey, you're a steward of this data. We just need to know who they are so that when there's a change or there's an update or there's any reason at all to communicate with these people or to let them know that this data is now included within the warehouse, whatever the purpose may be, documenting who defines it, produces, and uses it across the organization can be extremely valuable to those individuals that ask the question. Some will they want to use the governance metadata? And it seems, again, to be a silly question. You know, where are they going to want it? They're going to want it when they're defining the data, when they're producing and using the data. When they have questions about the data, they need to know who they need to go to to get the information, to get the answers that they want or the answers that they need in order to do their specific job. So when will they want or when will they need the governance metadata? Well, I hope some of you will maybe answer those questions. Again, I haven't been asking you to do that with each of the different questions, but I'd be really curious either through an email or whatever means you have to let me know you know, how you answer these who, what, why, where, when, and hows in regards to governance metadata in your organization. But it seems to be a silly question as to when will they want it. They want to have access to it whenever you can make that information available to you, to them. And the next question becomes, where will they go to get it? And I'll talk about that in a second. So when we're talking about, what, well, when will these people need governance metadata? This diagram right here is something that I call a governance activity matrix. And governance activity matrix, I, I mean, we're cross-referencing what the steps of an activity are with the different roles that we've defined as part of our operating model or framework for governance within our organization. And the truth is, when are they going to want the metadata? They're going to want it during each of these steps of this specific activity. So this specific activity has to do with the certification process for data to go to either a master data solution or into or into a, a data warehouse, or wherever you're taking the data. So if we're certifying data. These are the steps that we follow, these are the specific steps that we follow, and they want to know who they need to get involved um, at any point in time within the, uh, within the process. Another example, and I know some of these are hard to read. This is an example of of an organization that put governance in place to help them to restructure the data in their data warehouse. So again, here are the steps that they follow to restructure or to structure this the data for or restructure the data for their data warehouse. 
and these are the different roles associated with the governance program, and these are specific activities that these individuals in or participate in as part of this step and as part of this step. And again, this becomes metadata as well, governance metadata that says not only do we need to know who the people are in the organization, but what they do and what's the end result. What are some of the resulting things that come from involving the appropriate people at the appropriate time in any of the initiatives that we talk about, whether it's um, certification, whether it's classification, whether it's uh, resolving issues, whether it is um, being, uh, putting any type of process in place that we apply governance to. Again, another example, and this kind of, again, is, is even harder to read, but again, what it did is it took the roles and responsibilities of the program with the different steps to take in the activities. And as I circle these things, that's when they're going to want to know this information about the metadata, about the, the data that's being governed across the organization. How will we deliver the governance metadata to these individuals that need it to do their job? Well, we need to really take advantage of any tools we have available to us. If we have a metadata repository or a business glossary or a data dictionary or, or a governance software, and there's a lot of different types of governance software, some that better jobs than others, uh, managing this information about who does what with data across the organization, a data governance homepage. I've seen a lot of organizations who have taken this common data matrix tool that doesn't cost you anything to implement within your organization and made it available to people through the governance homepage. So again, you want to identify, well, where will they want to go to get this information? How will they want to go about getting that information? How can we deliver it to them? And when will it be most effective to them? Take a look at the tools that you have in the organization and recognize that a lot of the information that's stored in those tools is the regular data metadata that we talked about. If we have the ability to be able to extend some of these tools to include the who part of the question, then I suggest that we do that. We start to collect who the stewards are, who the domain stewards are, uh, who the partners are that are associated with this data across the organization. Where will they have access, where will they want to access the governance metadata? So again, I'm listing a whole bunch of different Different tools they use as part of their job, whether it's the dashboards or through ad hoc reports, or canned or distributed reports. You know, again, whatever tools they're using to access the data, if they have questions about the people that are associated with this data, or if we're going to make a change, who are we going to impact across the organization? That may come up in any of these types of initiatives where we're delivering dashboards, ad hoc reports, canned reports, and so on and so forth to people within our organization. Basically, what have we talked about here today? We've talked about governance metadata versus you know, critical data metadata and how governance metadata is more associated with the people that define, produce, data, and use data across the organization. We talked about a, the metadata as being an enabler for success. We talked about the seven questions for the day. There were two who questions as to who cares and who has responsibility for metadata, what metadata they need, why do they need it, when, where, how, all of those types of things become very important pieces of information. We talked about some tools and templates very quickly here in this hour about, well, how can we go about collecting this information? And what I want to do is I want to spend the, the rest of the short amount of time that we have left answering questions that people have. But before we do that, again, I wanted to share with you the information about the upcoming webinars, the governing data big and small, come one, come all. And how do we manage data governance expectations? But at this point, Shannon, if you're with us here, what I'd like to do is address any of the questions that people may have about uh, about this webinar uh, presentation. And of course, the most popular question that we get that comes in is, is always whether or not people will get uh, the copy of the slides. And just a reminder that within two business days, so for this webinar by end of day Monday, I will send out a follow-up email with links to the slides, the recording of the session, and anything else requested. And we've got some questions coming in already. And I just want to start, Bob, with a comment because I do love a professional controversy, of course. It's just the way we move forward in an industry. <laughs> of course. Of course. <laughs> you know, I know you do too. So I, I, uh, when you were discussing uh, definitions, uh, a comment came in that said, um, sorry, but metadata is not about 
is not data about data. It, it is the description of the data. Just want to know your thoughts on that. And everyone else in the attendee, feel free to give your opinion as well in the chat section. I'd to hear their questions. And so um, it is the, the industry definition is data about data, but I've kind of extended that definition to go even further. And the definition includes the people that are involved with the data. If we don't know who the appropriate people are to bring into conversations or to get involved in solving a problem or to make aware of, a, uh, of an issue, associated with the data or a change to a regulatory role, we're really making a mistake. We really need to capture and collect that information. So description of the data, yeah, that's metadata because it's data about the data, but we also want to talk about the people that are associated with the data. Um, that also becomes metadata. So I guess beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and so it really depends on what your definition of metadata is. Uh, and if you don't consider governance metadata to be metadata, I'd love to have that conversation with you and try to, to kind of persuade you to think about metadata perhaps in a non-traditional sense. So I mean, always love controversy, and uh, I'm not sure that was as controversy as it sounded initially, but, uh, but hopefully I answered that question for you. <laughs> no, definitely not, but it's a good discussion, and, and I appreciate the comment um, and your answer. So. I'm uh, moving on to the next question. It's um, the question is I'm hearing from experts that metadata governance and master data governance are two different governances. So data governance and metadata governance falls within the same pond. Well, I mean, there's master data governance, if you want to call it that. It's really just data governance of master data. Just like in the, in the uh, next month's webinar, I'm going to talk about big data and big data governance. And is there really such a thing as big data governance, or is it just governance applied to big data? So I would say that, that master data governance and big data governance and data warehouse governance and all this, the, or I'm sorry, big data, metadata, and, and master data, metadata, that they are all very specifically about the data itself. And what we're trying to do a little bit through this uh, presentation is enlighten people to the idea that governance metadata may be just a little bit different than traditional types of metadata that we think of day to day and that are written about in a lot of the governance books, or I'm sorry, in a lot of the metadata books. Books. It really has to do with relating the data to the people of the organization, again, that have responsibility for defining and producing and using that data across the organization. So I would say we could throw all of that metadata into the same pond, but back to the, the controversial issue, you know, some of it's just more descriptive of the data itself. The governance metadata ends up being the data about the people, and that becomes very important. In order to implement governance in your organization, it becomes very important important to know who has responsibility for this data across the organization. So I guess, yes, it all falls into the same pond, um, but it, it, it's from different places, so therefore it needs to be managed just a little bit differently. Who is responsible in preparing the data dictionary? Who's responsible? That's a good question. Um, it differs across the organization, but oftentimes it seems as though the, the people in the information technology or in the business process planning areas, they may have responsibility for delivering a glossary or for a data dictionary. But if we deliver those tools without getting input from the people in the business areas, I think we're making a big mistake. That's where you get a lot of these, what I refer to as cheeseburger definitions, a burger with cheese, a student address is the address of a student. It doesn't really describe anything more than just the words that are used to to, to, define the, uh, to define the piece of data itself. So in a lot of organizations, it's really got to be a combination of people in IT or people that are in a data services part of the organization, but in cooperation with the business people, because we're going to add more value to this metadata if we get the business people involved in validating the definitions, validating the descriptions, validating who does what with data across the organization. So I, I would say the easiest answer to that question is everybody. We get everybody involved, although somebody has to be responsible for providing the tool. That a, uh, experience, that, that's typically come from the IT part of the organization. 
And, and Bob, I'm afraid that's all we have time for today. There's some great questions coming in. But one of the great things about this particular webinar series is Bob will take the time to write out the answers to the questions. So if you have additional questions, keep them coming in, and we'll get you answers in the follow-up email. Again, that will go out on by end of day Monday with links to the slides in the recording. And Bob, thank you so much. This is another great presentation. And, and thank you, everybody, for your, your incredible uh, interaction with the uh, with the presentation as well. I always love it when attendees get involved. So I hope everyone has a great day. And Bob, thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you, everybody who participated in this session. Take care now.